So hopefully none of us have a problem visualizing one-dimensional waves. What I mean by one-dimensional waves um, is that their direction of propagation is in one dimension. So here's what we call the direction of propagation or for an even simpler view it could have been just a single pulse in a string and then it also had a direction of propagation and we could see what happens when for example it hits a fixed boundary and then the propagation returns the other way but it's still in the same dimension so these all were kind of one dimensional waves but of course we want to extend our knowledge to two dimensions so again to be clear on our one dimensional wave we had a two dimensional picture because the displacement of our wave was actually in a uh, second dimension but the propagation of the wave only happened in one dimension and now we want to look at the propagation in two dimensions so let's take this example of a wave right here and let's suppose that we're looking at the top of a water wave and let's imagine drawing that wave now in two dimensions because of course the surface of the water has two dimensions and so the waves could propagate in two dimensions we're going to have to change the way we draw waves a little bit if we're going to look at two dimensions so remember how that the top of a wave front is called a crest when we look at a wave in two dimensions we're gonna basically draw the crests so for example if we had a long wave front we might see multiple crests like this and I'm drawing long straight wave fronts or maybe it's easier to imagine poking a stick up and down in the water in one spot and suppose here's your stick as you ripple it up and down in the water you will see wave fronts which kind of go outward from that point of the stick and so each of these lines in the diagram doesn't matter which diagram you're looking at but each of the lines represents a wave crest or a wave front so if I were to sketch sketch in kind of lightly the rest of the picture it would kind of look like this and each line would be sort of the top of another wave again and the same thing would work for our circular point wave it's kind of hard to, to sketch but so you get the idea of what this two-dimensional drawing is supposed to look like and of course our logical next step is to see how these two-dimensional waves interact with things like maybe walls standing in the water or maybe it's a dock how do they interact and so we're going to have to again think about the direction of propagation so what we do is we draw what's called a ray and we draw a ray like this in the direction of the propagation of our waves and we draw the ray at a right angle to our wave fronts or to the way our crests are drawn so if I were to draw rays from our point source I would probably have to draw a few rays to kind of get the idea of what's going on and they would be perpendicular to the tangent at any point so at any of these points I can say my ray is perpendicular to the crest and basically we use this ray to start thinking about how the wave will reflect off of different things that are in its path so let's just think about reflection in general what do we know about reflection well let's not even think about waves to start with let's suppose here's the surface of the ground and I'm bouncing a basketball and I'm doing a bounce pass to someone so I throw the basketball toward the ground what happens to it well the basketball goes and hits the ground and bounces back up and hopefully into the hands of the other receiver on the other side or let's take a different scenario suppose I have a mirror and I shine a flashlight at the mirror what happens to the rays of light from the flashlight well they will hit the mirror and then they will bounce off and reflect Now what does the law of reflection tell us and you should be familiar with this you're certainly familiar with it just from a observational point of view but there's a law of reflection that says that the angle of incidence so the angle for example here is equal to the angle of reflection or another way of showing the angles we could draw the normal line perpendicular to the ground and the angle of incidence is the angle to the normal line which is equal to the angle toward the reflection line so that's plain and simple the law of reflection 
So it would have worked exactly the same way with our flashlight if I would draw the normal line here. And our angle of incidence is equal to our angle of reflection. These two have to be the same. Of course, we're wondering how this applies to waves. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, how is this going to help me figure out how these waves would reflect if I were to insert a wall into the water right here? And this is where our discussion of the two-dimensional waves and our alternate methods of depicting them is going to come in very handy. Remember that we can draw rays perpendicular to the wave front. So starting in the center of this point source here, I can draw a ray at any different angle as long as it's, so in this case it's any different angle because any different angle still gets me perpendicular. And I can draw them out in any direction. So if I would draw a ray directly in this way, you'll see that it is going to hit the wall and apparently it looks like it's going to be at a right angle to the wall in this case as well. Well now I can analyze that ray or how the reflected ray is going to behave based on the law of reflection. So the reflection from this ray looks like it's going to reflect in exactly the same direction because it was at right angles and that obeys the law of reflection. But I might have another ray drawn that's like this, which remember is still at right angles to my crests. And I can analyze how this is going to reflect also based on the law of reflection because I know that the two angles, this angle and this angle, have to be the same. So taking a law like this and putting it in the context of our two dimensional waves is what really gives us the power to predict what's going to happen in different situations. So let's quickly recap here. We could have wave fronts that are in sort of an arc shape. A wave fronts, of course, another name for the line that depicts the top of the crest. We could have ones that are in a straight line. Of course, they come from a different sort of source. The straight lines would have to be like a barrier oscillating back and forth in the water or something like that. We then draw the ray perpendicular to these. And of course, on the round ones, that gives us various different angles. On the straight ones, our ray is only one direction. And it's the ray that we use to decide how something is going to reflect off a barrier. Okay, so then we say that the ray, is, of course, is going to uh, follow the law of reflection. So this is just the basics to set us up for predicting waves. It will really get interesting when we start talking about how those reflected waves will interact with the incident waves and will interact with other waves that are around. But let's start with just focusing on this law of reflection.